Hi, <laughs> uh, uh, Tom Stewart here, uh, Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. You say hey. that like you're from South Carolina. <laughs> is that part of your working vocabulary? It, it is, isn't it? Where'd you get that? It is. Okay. Probably from you. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm a bad <laughs> influence. Be careful, Greg. Well, you're already, you live in Texas, so you're, yeah. you're, you're allowed to, to you know, it's, it comes natural. Greg Shepard's with us today with uh, Dallas Maids and Emily's Maids. And it's like, wow, two cleaning businesses, you've got that right. And you're going to learn some uh, neat tricks here, not only in terms of how to diversify across two different brands and two different price points, but also how to use uh, SEO and digital marketing techniques to make both of, both of them be successful for you. Thank you for being with us today, Greg. You bet, Tom, and thanks for having me on. Hey, we're super excited. Also, Greg, before we get started, on the right-hand side of your screen, you see where it says private chat? To the right of that, it also says live comments. If you click on that, you'll be able to see what comes up. Oh, okay. We don't have any yet, but we will get some. And people will be asking questions. Yeah, we we'll people, see them. We Tom will put them up on the screen too. We've got people jumping on. They just haven't quite got their uh, in, into question asking mode yet. So while we have a moment, do we want to take this to look at what we're going to be doing over the rest of the week? Yeah, yeah, it's good while people are popping on. Uh, so we got Greg today. That's obvious. Uh, tomorrow we have my daughter. Her name is Shara Riedel. Shara rhymes with car, not with with chair. So a lot of times people call her Shara. It's Shara. Um, she is um, a salesperson. It's, she's the top salesperson over at the Electric Guard Dog. And it is, I'm not sure if it's international, but for sure. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Marlo. Um, oh, hey, Debbie. Um, it is for sure a national company, and she routinely sells, get this, for those of you that haven't heard this number yet, over $40 million in sales each year. That's four so zeros. How many zeros <laughs> is that? Yeah. Four zero, it? over. You're not used to writing yeah. that number down when you're doing your bank deposit. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm, I'm not either. That's so oh. uh, wacky. That's seven zeros. Not all of us own Tesla stock, right? So know, we don't all know those big numbers. <laughs> you can buy some Tesla stock for forty million dollars, though. So yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So anyway, Shara is going to um, share her top ten sales strategies that she thinks will also work in our business. Having grown up in this business, uh, she knows a lot about the cleaning business as well. She's worked on the inside and she's also helped me on the outside or on the back end. Um, we have a secret guest this week and we shared a little bit about her. Uh, the thing I'd like to share this week is that she runs a $1.4 million company. So if you wanna have a little bit of an idea about what size she is and start crafting your questions today. And right. she's gonna be it. our guest for On The Spot. And most of you probably know, but if we have anybody new here on the spot is our rapid fire Q&A session where Liz, myself and our special guest each get one minute or less, no more than a minute because we get cut off right at a minute, right, Liz? No longer to answer your... Well, unless you're Tom. Well, unless you're running the clock, in which case every once in a while you go a second or two over, but who's counting? <laughs> No, it's, it's really fun. We get a bunch of questions in, and um, it's kind of the highlight of our week. So um, mark that on your calendar. You want to see see Shara, too. My gosh, it's, you can't imagine what we're going to learn here from somebody who's doesn't doesn't rhyme with doesn't rhyme with chair, Tom. Rhymes Shara. with car. Shara. Picture Shara in a car. Shara. Well, you know, you, you know, I can't spell and I can't read well, and I've got, I've got, a, I've got a lot of adversity I'm oh trying God. to overcome. But I'll, 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 I'll get it right. By and if not, <laughs> right, uh, you can, if not, you, you do not need my permission to correct me. Well, you know, she's heard it all, so she won't care at all. She won't even notice. She's been called everything under the sun. 
All right. Uh, so I know you guys are excited to hear. We have been talking a lot about Greg all week long, getting everybody ready to hear about all of the amazing things that you're doing, Greg. And um, but first, can you sort of give everybody a quick uh, like update about who you are, how how long you've been in business, you know, what what is the business to you? Yeah, sure. Well, in 2004, I left the world of IT to start a maid service. And my first business was called Dallas Maids. Um, yeah, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, in 2004, um, I knew that internet was going to be the key. And so I was, I was lucky. I got the great domain name. I was able to rank my website. And in 70 years, got to that 1 million mark, which was awesome. Um, Emily's Maids, which we'll be talking about here, was more recent. I started Emily's Maids in 2011. Um, got the idea after trying to help a fellow maid service owner. He was just starting out, he needed the business. And I thought, why not give him the leads that thought Dallas Maids was too expensive? Um, he went out of business. You know, you, you got to charge what you're worth. And I thought, why not create a second maid service to capture those cost conscious leads? And thus, Emily's Maze was born. Okay. So, um, what what is what is Emily's Maze? Um, Greg, does it have a separate office? Does oh. it run exactly the same as you do? How does it work? Good question. I created Emily's Maze with one goal in mind was to cut costs everywhere I could. Um, for example, Dallas Maids, we have an office, a physical office where we come to. Emily's Maids, no. Emily's Maids is uh, to save on cost. Um, there's no office, little overhead. And when you call uh, Emily's Maids, you'll get Jill. And Jill sounds like the American girl next door. Um, she's perfect at her job, but she doesn't live in the US. She was born and raised in Costa Rica. And so I'm able to save money through uh, outsourcing uh, the talent of the third world uh, countries or second world countries. Um, I originally had started Emily's Maids as a referral service. So I was um, had ICs at first, but uh, Texas decided, you know, that was no go and I had to change over to employees, which was fine. Um, when I first started out, uh, our pricing was a little bit lower, but it's kind of gone up over time because you know you gotta you gotta make a profit. Um, and there was other things I had to add on to it. Uh, for example, when I first started out as a referral agency, um, we didn't have insurance because of course uh, uh, insurance uh, you can't have insurance. Well, at least in Texas, with a referral agency. So now we have insurance, a little bit higher pricing. And now I have two maid services, which is great. Um, if we get a customer now who calls Dallas Maids and they say, you know, your pricing is too high, my staff will say, hey, you ought to check out Emily's Maids. And uh, yeah, it's it's grown from there. So from a back room standpoint, you've done some things to, to save money on Emily's Maids. Could you do the same thing on Dallas Maids? I mean, from... Oh. Yeah, absolutely, I do. Well, first, one of the things about Emily's Maids was I didn't have to do marketing. You know, Dallas Maids just brought in the customers that thought were too high. But uh, I have implemented a few things that I you know learned from Emily's with Dallas Maids. For example, our uh, quality assurance manager, um, she's from the Philippines, and Norma, who also pretty much does it all for us, payroll, uh, answering calls, you name it. She lives, you know, she's from Mexico. So having folks uh, leveraging uh, labor from other countries uh, not only cuts our costs, but also those who we hire get paid above average for, for their uh, country, which is fantastic because not only is it cheaper for us, we're able to bring in some wonderful talents. Wow. We could do it. We could do it. take a whole hour and just talk about the techniques of, Hiring talent in other parts of the world. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I really want to hear more about that, too. I, I know we have to get to the questions here, but I definitely want to hear a little bit more about that. First, before we move on to Sarah's question, I see you have Sarah's question up there. Tom, can you talk a little bit more, uh, Greg, about the differences between Emily's maids and um, Dallas maids? And also, if you can do all of these things with Emily's maids, um, cheaper, right? You're doing everything cheaper. Why aren't you doing them at Dallas Mays? If you could speak to that. And those are those are those are two different things. If I could expand just a little bit, the overhead part of it seems like it you could keep that, you know, those advantages on both sides. But the forward facing part, what your customers see, do your customers are paying more for Dallas Maids? What more do your customers get from Dallas Maids that your customers don't get from Emily's? Good question. Um Actually, the prices between both are um, not that far great. So they're, they're pretty similar. Emily's Maids is a little bit lower on the low side. Uh, differences, um, yeah, like I said, Dallas Mays has a physical office. My uh, office staff comes here, most of them. And it gives us uh, uh, a central place where we can have meetings, um, have little uh, get-togethers. Uh, we supply the supplies at Dallas made. So we have our supply room. Emily's maids is different in that the ladies are responsible for their own supplies, even if they're, you know, they're employees, but we compensate them uh, for each job. That is for each job. We give them $5 uh, for supplies. Um, that's actually made it a lot easier. And frankly, I wish I could do the same thing. With Dallas maids too, because when you take, you know, the supplies out of the factor it makes things so much more easier to run. Um, but that's pretty much, uh, built in Dallas maids now. So, you know, I don't plan on changing that out. I don't think the ladies would want that, but it was, you know, it was a nice little thing at Emily's maids, making things much more simpler and, you know, cheaper for us. Um, other differences, marketing, you know, uh, with Dallas maids, I've worked much harder on our, uh, SEO, um, because that's our main source of business. Second is referrals. Um, Emily's Maids, for the longest time, we didn't really work on the uh, marketing aspect because Dallas Maids was supplying all the leads. Um, until recently, about two years ago, I decided to uh, start working on the SEO. I thought, why not? Because you know, just it would simply be more business. And as you saw earlier, you know, Dallas Maids and Emily's Maids are now at the very top of uh, the uh, organic listings on on Google. So, uh, you know. We got the top two. We spot. didn't pop those up on the. We didn't pop them up on the call. Yet. That was before we went live, but we will pop them up so oh, yeah. you guys can see yeah. where where the ranking is for for these two companies. So, so if, go ahead, Greg. From a from a customer standpoint, if I had Emily's maids clean my home one week and Dallas maids clean it the next week, could I tell the difference? <laughs> uh, different uniforms, of course. Um, no. Actually, I don't think you could. And, and, and don't tell my Dallas made customers that <laughs> because they pay more. But um, the well, ladies do a great job. Nobody, nobody's watching us. It's just us. <laughs> Go ahead. We're good. But uh, no, no, both, 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 uh, you know, both, both uh, companies, the clean is, is great. You know, you got to hire the right people. Um, differences Dallas made. Is the training the same? Sorry? Is the training the same or is that another difference? That's a great question. Dallas Maids, we have a training program, the whole thing. Um, Emily's Maids, no, we don't. Um, we might have a lady shadow, you know, we'll actually have a lady shadow uh, another lady uh, before we hire them to see how they clean. And actually that's one of the best things and, and uh, that anybody can do. Before you hire, have an audition. Have them go with one of your teams, pay them for the day as a, a contractor. But if your best teams see how this uh, the new person cleans, um, you know what you're about to hire. And our we used to have two weeks of training, one to two weeks at Dallas Maids. Now it's around three days because of this, um, and it's really uh, it's really helped our quality. But uh, training for Emily's, not so much. Uh, we try to find the best ones from the beginning. The audition is a huge thing in determining how well they will do um, before we hire them. Uh, but 
yeah, strangely, they both do great work. Now, let's say we have somebody that doesn't really uh, is, is is not performing to you know uh, as a five star performer. For both Emily's maids and Dallas maids, our compensation is based on the performance. And you know we use Launch Twenty Seven. We love Launch Twenty Seven. And the great thing, one of the great things about Launch Twenty Seven, um, and if you don't have Launch Twenty Seven, make sure you have something like this. Is the feedback uh, emails sent out to each customer after each clean? They rate your cleaner, and from that feedback, we're able to determine who our best cleaners are, who we need to you know provide you know the, the best jobs for, um, who deserves the uh, performance bonuses, the raises. Um, each pay period, uh, they get extra. Well, they all start out with a bonus. Where that bonus goes up depends on you know how well they perform, and so. Our whole system's designed on rewarding performers and kind of encouraging the performers, those that are not performing, uh, to kind of uh, move out. But uh, fortunately, right now, everybody's performers. But I, I think that maybe uh, the COVID 19 has something to do with that. <laughs> um, Is so, Emily's maze, so are these solos? Sorry? Do you, do you do solos or teams? Good question. We have uh, for Emily's maids. We only do solos. We only do solos because it's much cheaper to operate that way. Uh, when you have one person uh, going from job to job, uh, you're actually saving time. You add another person in a team of two, you're losing time because there you have two people now going from job to job, traveling, and there's actually you lose time uh, that would otherwise could have been uh, spent on cleaning. We don't do teams of three or more because that's just crazy. Um, no offense to those with three more teams, but with three more teams, it gets more costly, not only with the uh, drive time, but also we tend to notice that, you know, there's more of a chance of somebody not pulling their weights. Um, so we do teams of one uh, and two for Dallas maids and just solo for Emily's maids. Okay. All right. So I got to go back to my original question. And my original question was, Emily's Maid is a much more skinned down program. Yes. It sounds like you're delivering the same service, but all of the costs are much less. Why don't you do the same thing at Dallas Maid? Why do you have the two different models if you are you have the same output? Like, like I said before, I've actually brought in some uh, things that I learned from Emily's Maid, Dallas Maid. Um, I guess... The big difference is having a physical office. Um, I like that, and it, it, it's a little bit more costly. But uh, um, with teams of two, we got to have teams of two of Dallas maids because a lot of our customers prefer teams of two. They want us in and out much quicker. So we wouldn't be able to go to uh, solo jobs because we'd be, we would not be able to provide our customers that want us want two teams or I'm not two teams, but two people in and out. Um, but with Emily's Maids, the biggest thing is no overhead with, uh, you know, with the office, slightly lower pricing, um, the ladies taking care of their own supplies. Dallas Maids, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we do provide all the supplies for our ladies. Um, but that's something that we wouldn't want to take away. It might save us a little money, Liz, but um right now how everything's set uh, you don't want to rock the boat with too many changes um i gotcha yeah anyway supplies so, aren't that much anyway so we we have been um preaching for years that there are lots of different ways to run a successful company and not only do you believe that but you live that <laughs> lots of ways to run a successful company so okay so i know that we did have a bunch of questions over here um, I think we did. We get most of the differences for Leslie. Do you think? Do you think you hit most of the differences, Greg? Yeah, um, I believe so. Um, a little pricing. A lot of things that we provide for our customers and our ladies at Dallas Mates. We don't do so much at Emily's Mates to cut costs. Um, I guess one more difference would be with Dallas Mates. Pretty much just a premium service and 
they will take make sure the customer's happy, you know, no matter what the cost. Um, we were, we were, uh, you know, for example, uh, a while ago, one of our teams that actually broke in a, I think a ten or twenty dollar teacup, a uh, very small thing, uh, very cheap, but we, you know, we spent over four hundred dollars to repair it because it was of sentimental value to the customer. Um, we did that on our own. Um, of course, the customer would have been happy with uh, just, you know, I guess a free service or whatnot. But um, with Dallas Maids, we take that extra step uh, with our customers. So you're saying if you would have broke that same cup at Emily's Maids, you would have just replaced the cup, 10 yeah, or 20 bucks, right? Yeah, we wouldn't, uh, I don't think we would have uh, um, had paid that much money uh, for the cup. We would have probably done a more you know, traditional thing, um, like give them a discount. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's awesome. I love that. Thank you. Uh, I think I think we had Sarah up. Yeah, yeah. Sarah wants to know about how much business does Dallas Mays refer to Emily's? That's a good question, and frankly, I don't know. <laughs> 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 that's okay. That's a legitimate answer. We we appreciate that. Yeah, you know, and the reason what and the reason for that, uh, Sarah, is that um, with any business. You want to work yourself out of the system. You want to have things run autopilot. Um, you can do that, and then you have the time to start a second business. So, um, how much? You know, I can find that figure out. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, but there's a lot of things that are, you know, with Dallas Maids and Emily's Maids that are day-to-day -day operations. I just don't know anymore because I'm not that much involved. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Let's see. Well, this is kind of in the same area code. Um, which one's bigger? Which one does more job? Yeah. Oh, Dallas Mates. Dallas Mates for sure. If you had to guess, is it, you know, 60 40, 70, 30? Oh, good question. No, Dallas Mates, um, you know, that's, that was, uh, you know, that's my million dollar company there. Um, I would say, I would say about eighty twenty. I'd, okay. I'd say, you know. Okay. But yeah, twenty percent revenue is like pure profit. You know, I mean, if that was revenue that you wouldn't have realized, that extra twenty percent means a lot on the bottom line. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about how much business. Uh, um, I'd say Dallas Mace has about 80% of the business that we have, and we face that's about 20. Is that what the question Yeah, that was the question. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you say, well, 20% yeah. is not that much, but it's 20 additional. So, I mean, that's, that's like yeah. free money, right? Yeah, and that's exactly why I started Emily's Maze. I thought, why am I letting these uh, all these leads go? Because we're too you know, high priced. Why not have a, a generic maid service? Sarah wants to know about yeah. your bonus incentive program. You mentioned that with uh, your, your your survey cards and and, and using that. Mm -hmm. how, how how does how do, how does that work? Yeah, I'd be glad. Okay, uh, good question. Well, first, um, first we get the feedback from the customers, um, and we incorporate that into their uh, their uh, their salary every paycheck. Um, the things that everybody should be doing um, is online reviews. We don't uh, actively tell the customer this. Maybe we should. But if any of our teams gets an online review of five stars and gets mentioned on you know Yelp or Google or wherever, um, they get a tip. And we say it's a tip on behalf of the customer. So. Uh, they get a tip each time they get mentioned online for five star reviews, of course. Um, that's he actually started implementing that so about two, three years ago, which uh, has been fantastic because, as you know, you want good reviews online. Um, oh, I should have got uh, our raises are, of course, also based on the performance, and uh, I don't have our our. Our sheet with us, but if there's somewhere I can share it, I'd be glad to share our performance reviews and how we determine raises with your audience. 
Yeah, I mean, if that's uh, something that we could turn into like a download, we can put that on our resources page. Okay. Yeah, if you like, do that. Yeah, I could, uh, good question, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> good job, Sarah. <laughs> and I, I could do. Uh, let me make a little note. I'll put it. Uh, I'll put it on our, our blog at Dallas Maids for you guys. Okay. That's awesome. Well. Thanks, Ray. You bet. Um, now you heard. Yeah, no, um, that's, that's, you heard what he just said there. He's like. He could have sent me a PDF, which is fine because it, it works yeah. out. We all get it, but he's getting a backlink to his website, which gets into the SEO, which we haven't quite gotten to yet. But uh, I don't, yeah. I didn't want that to be overlooked. Yeah, it's a smart yeah. business. Right there, right? He didn't say I'll send you a link. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go ahead. And send I'll, I'll send you. Upload it. No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna put a, a link to his blog, which is which is awesome. Well deserved. Um, yeah, we love that. That we love smart business moves, Greg. That's why that's the name of the show, right? We're always mm -hmm. looking for those things that successful businesses are doing that other people just don't even think about or just kind of let go. But wow, that's that's so spot on. It's awesome. and, getting a, and getting a backlink from some websites that get more traffic's worth a lot more than getting a backlink from a website that doesn't get much traffic. You know, cleaning business today isn't the same as the New York Times. However, we do get more traffic than most websites. So that's a pretty good place to get a backlink from. Yeah. And traffic also has an effect on SEO. I mean, I, I try to share good stuff on our blog for other maid service owners. Um, because if you have quality content in your website, um, hopefully it ups the traffic, ups the time that people are on your website, and Google sees that, and so that helps with your uh, your rankings. Uh, we have a question here: Do the workers know they are being evaluated? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, we're of course we're very open. We have um, uh, they know how, you know, they get their bonuses. They know how they get their raises. Um, we have a um, a big board in the hallway with each team where we can write down the compliments that the uh, the customers give uh, and the complaints um, but and that's actually a pretty good uh, motivator too because you do that you might get a few complaints at first later see that it's public and before you know it, you're not getting any complaints um, I'm well I'm sorry what was the the, the, the question totally forgot I was about do you do they know they're being evaluated? Oh yeah, of course. Um, you got to be open with that. Um, yeah. Here's a question from from Leslie, yeah. one of our our regulars. If we'd had frequent flyer miles, Leslie would have a trip to Hawaii by now. So, do you have yeah. any control over the supplies that Emily's maids uses? No, we don't. It's the lady's discretion. Okay. So how does that work with like uh, SDS and stuff like that? Do you have to worry about safety data sheets or they're still employees, right? Yeah. Oh, that is a good question. Um, them taking care of their own supplies was sort of a leftover when we uh, had them as ICs originally and converted them to uh, uh, employees. Um, you know, Liz, that might be something I need to look into. I didn't think about it because at Dallas Maids, we have an office, we have our supplies, yeah. we have all the sheets all in the public area, which you have to do. Yeah. Um, and Liz Maids, no, we, we don't because the ladies choose their supplies. So thank you for bringing that up because that's something I need to check into. Hmm. All right. Yeah. But you do, business, <laughs> you do business in Texas and I mean, some states are more regulated and more red tape, and I think Texas is probably one of the most employer-friendly states in the country. Yeah. It is. Yeah, and absolutely. Insurance requirements are m much more relaxed. There's a lot of things that, I mean, Texas really makes it as easy as they can for, for people to create jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it called? Uh, workman comp. Workman comp compensation is not required in, in Texas, um, which saves a huge, huge expense. Well, you know, and you were talking to 
exactly there in <laughs> California, the highest rates in the nation, right? So, and by a, a pretty steep margin too. So I'm sure she's like, oh, yeah. I feel for that. I think Leslie just said you could help pay some of her workers' comp insurance just <laughs> so you don't miss out on all the fun. <laughs> What we're all doing, Greg. <laughs> Brian wants to know where you find most of your employees. Okay, good question. Well, it depends. Well, first, I'll let you know what we do, but it really depends on your own market. Um, you have to experiment with uh, as many mediums as you can and simply find out the best one. Uh, in Dallas, you know, we, we've done newspapers, we've done online. Um, in Dallas, there's a Univision, which is a, a Hispanic TV um, uh, TV station, and they do a great thing for their viewers. They provide uh, each news hour; they'll have on the screen jobs that are available, and all you need to do is fax in your job, and they will put you know house cleaner needed, call blah 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 blah, and once we do it, we get hundreds of calls and so that has wow. been yeah that's that's been fantastic for us uh, we haven't really needed to hire lately uh or for a while you want to keep your you know people we have a crazy lower turnover rate but um uh but when we do need people that's the best way um also craigslist has worked for us here in, in dallas and facebook um post on Facebook. Um, that's pretty effective too. So are the majority of your employees or your workforce, is it mostly Hispanic then? Yes. Yeah. And you know, it wasn't by design. That's just how it happened. Um, the best workers that we found, um, tend to be Hispanic females with, with families. Um, you know, we'll, ha we'll hire anybody that can clean period. Um, but that's just how it's worked mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, so that's your avatar for your your professional house cleaner, right? Uh, that's good. I like it. Uh, have you had any coaching in your house cleaning career, Greg? That is a good question. Do you have a business coach? Uh, no, no. Um, this is what I did when I first started Dallas Maids. I'd reached out to a lot of the other owners and a lot of them were fantastic. I mean, they were there to show me the best, uh, you know, their systems. And I saw what they were doing and I just simply incorporated the best of what I saw over there into uh, Dallas Mates. And so my advice to anybody starting out who can't afford a coach is to get to know other owners because I mean, they're, they're not really your competition. There's plenty of business to go around and you'll find that other owners will be super helpful. Um, most of them are, you know, they, they feel privileged to be able to help others knowing where they were before. Um, usually the most successful owners tend to be those that are very giving uh, and very open uh, about helping other, you know, other people. So that's why I would definitely recommend is if you know your, your, uh, your the other owners. Um, no, I haven't done any coaching yet. Um, I hadn't even uh, participated in any conference until 2018 um, when I was invited to a, a mastermind group. Um, but no, I just uh, did my own thing. Yeah, great. And that was crazy too. So I was at Greg's first conference and he was just because he had, he had never been hooked up with arcsy you guys he had no idea about anything he was like i did not know for any smart business owners around <laughs> i loved it i was like i know these people are crazy right and we we spent a good chunk of time outside uh the women's restroom <laughs> chatting about that uh, trying to figure out you know how are we gonna move forward from that but um, jumping to what you said i want to well, i want to remind everybody anybody that's on this call that is one of the main things 
that people say they get from the membership in Artsy. So if you're going back and forth with Artsy, should I, shouldn't I, you know, uh, ISSA, um, you know, you're, you're hearing it from Greg again, you know, that networking with other business owners is some of the best education you've gotten is what you're saying, right, Greg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, invaluable when you're starting out, you know, being able to ask your friend who owns so-and-so maid service, how do you do this or do that? Um, that was that was key to, to my success. Yeah. In some regards, that's kind of what we do here every day at five o'clock. This is a form of networking. And uh, good point, Tom. Yeah. We're all learning. Robin wants to know about uh, the tip for a five star review. How much would that be? Right now, it's too low. You know, we offer ten dollars uh, per review. Um, frankly, it should be twenty dollars. Um, we do have if it's ten dollar uh, for a written review, but if it has, you know, if, if the customer posts the picture, like a before or after picture, you know, we up that to thirty dollars. Why? Because well, here's another secret. Um, you want five star reviews, but you want reviews with pictures because that actually helps your your SEO and helps you rank in the uh, the, the three pack. Um, so try to encourage customers to give you a, a review with a picture. Uh, it also helps uh, also in Yelp. We're yeah, uh, I never asked for a, for a picture. That's awesome. Thank you, Greg. Oh, you bet. Okay. No kidding. Um, that is, that's an awesome suggestion. Um, yeah. I want to jump into a little bit of how Greg gets the volume of work that he gets. He's uh, learned a lot of tricks and he's really, really at uh, the best in class in terms of digital marketing and, and, and getting the most out of the internet. And we want to talk about SEO, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go just a little bit different here before we get into SEO, because long before I met Greg, I stumbled across his YouTube channel. Oh, wow. And um, I'm not sure who is this young lady in these videos, Greg. She's actually an actress we hired for that series. Okay. Um, you know, she was fantastic at what she did, but, uh, um, <laughs> well, you brought this up. These, yeah, these are very corny videos, um, but actually more successful than I thought. We actually had people viewing them. If you want to, you know, I don't know how many of you guys have, have your own YouTube channels. I mean, this is an investment of, 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 of time. And, uh, and I don't know if Greg would suggest that this is where you would start with, with your, you know, digital presence, but, He's got almost 3,000 subscribers, and I don't know what percentage of YouTube channels have that many subscribers, but it's a small percentage, very small yeah. percentage. And look at some of the views that some of these videos have had, 12,000, 105,000 views for a video. I mean, that is some 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 pretty what rare. What is that video? All right. What's the video? Cleaning tips and secrets from a real professional. Oh. Nice. Three minutes. It's well, I'd watch it, but we're a little little short on time. But what I will do is I will copy this and I will paste it here. And we just go to go to YouTube and and type in Dallas Maids, and it'll pop right up. Everybody here, do yourself a, va a favor and poke around on this YouTube channel a little bit. There's something to be be learned here. The crazy thing, Tom, and well, this, I don't. We didn't even um, yeah. we didn't promote that. We didn't uh, advertise that YouTube channel. Um, everything was based simply on the content. That is, the videos were corny, but they had good content. And somehow, we got a semi you know successful YouTube channel. Um, so, actually, that's actually a very good tip for those who want to work on your SEO. Uh, be genuine. Uh, don't try to play Google, meaning that you don't want to, you know, do anything that Google might perceive might perceive as, uh, you know, manipulating the results. So, this channel, you know, we just simply made these corny videos, and 
um, it sort of took off. Uh, same thing with our SEO too. Um, you don't want to do anything that is black hat or even gray hat. You want to be genuine, real, and uh, simply provide good content. So, yeah, so. what I did before we, we, we jumped on here, I typed in, I just Googled uh, Dallas house cleaning. And if you see, Dallas Maids is number one in the map pack. Emily's is number two in the map pack. A lot of people argue that from an SEO standpoint and getting the most out of Google, being here is worth a lot more than showing up down here in natural search because this is what people do on their phone and most people, I'm, I'm sure that over half the traffic you're getting is, is on a phone. I should look into it. Um, I'm not really quite sure how much uh, traffic we're getting on the phone. Most, so. most websites are 60% are, are more phone at the moment, like yeah. in house cleaning. But if you notice, Dallas Maids is number one here in organic. And okay, Yelp, Mary Mage, National Franchise, Care. I mean, it's kind of hard to beat those guys in natural search, although Dallas Maids did. But if I go down here a little bit, still on the front page, page one, Emily's Maids. It's hard as heck in a city as big as Dallas to rank yeah. one website, much less two. So yeah, that's the point I wanted to make. I mean, Dallas, you're ranking twice at the top in freaking Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's if, amazing. If you were if you were in Festus, Missouri, and worked really hard, I imagine you can rank two websites. We had a guest yeah. earlier in the week that lives in Festus, Missouri. It's a long story, but it's not a very big town. But um, Dallas is a huge city. How, how, how do you it's do tough. That? It's tough to rank here. Um, we just got lucky. Um, you know, I think. You know, Greg, you say that a lot. <laughs> Great. You, I, you, you okay. say that. You got lucky a lot, but I mean, it, it's not just luck, right? You're you're putting work into this. You're putting time yes. in, yes. effort, and and I I get that some of it is timing, like with your YouTube channel, right? You were ahead of the curve on that. So what looks like luck is not really that it's so much lucky as that you started doing the things at the right time. And you were there, and you were ready, and you were prepared, right? The, yeah, you know what, what is the thing from when it preparation opportunity and preparation, you know, collide. That's how where success comes from. Yeah, and that's kind of how I see you. A lot of what you do. Yeah, YouTube. You know, I just I, I did it for two things. One, because I thought it'd be fun to have a little YouTube channel with uh, videos, and two, I wanted to see if it would help our SEO. Um, I think it was a positive on both, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I, you know, um, maybe it's not lucky with SEO. I know the basics. Um, I think the thing that makes, gives me the edge is that I don't do anything underhanded. I, I actually have, you know, good websites with, uh, good content and, um, I don't try to play the system. I, I think Google's really good at knowing who is, you know, trying to manipulate the, the search results, which is, by the way, one reason why I would never hire an SEO company. Um, I've just seen too many bad stories out there. Uh, they want to provide their, you know, clients with superficial results um, while, you know, there's no risk to them. Um, it's just, I think it's just much better if, uh, if you know the basics and you just work hard at it. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a pretty good feat of being you know number one and number two in Dallas. Um, but uh, it's, you don't need to hire you know pay four or five thousand dollars a month for a SEO guru to do it. So Greg, where did you 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 talk about the basics, right? Just doing the basics and and being consistent with that. Where yeah. did you learn about the basics? How how do you know what the basics are? I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, oh dear! You know what? I have a um, I have a manual I had written for a uh, SEO company. I was going to do an SEO company in 2015, but decided not to do it. Um, I will give you the uh, the blog post where that's you know where that is, so you can just read it. It's, you know the basics. 
Well, what uh, you what you could do is just put it on your blog and send oh, me a link. And that'll be two backlinks. It's already, it's already on my blog. It's already on my blog. I'll give, that, I'll give you that uh, backlink there. Um, okay, here it is. So the basics are: have your website. Have your you got to have the Google My Business page. Uh, you got to have you know Facebook, and you know if you are active on other any other social media like Twitter, then at you know that's good too. But you got to be active. Um, you want links from all those sites back to your, your website. You want links from your website to, to the, all those uh, important uh, uh, social platforms, uh, especially especially Google My Business. You know, here's here's a tip for Google My Business. Um, in addition to getting those five star reviews, um, you know, post a few updates. Google My Business has updates where you can post, you know, specials or news. Uh, or whatnot there um, do that that helps with your uh, SEO uh, one thing I do is if we have a you know if I write a blog post we will uh, put that blog post I'll have a you know put on our Facebook page or Google my business page on Twitter again all backlinks to that blog post um, yeah that's pretty much it also backlinks of course too. backlinks all right let me sh t tell you a secret with your uh, listeners on backlinks of course, you want the regular backlinks from all the directories or whatnot. Thank you. But you want backlinks your competition can't copy. See, one thing that you know you can do is copy your competition backlinks. Everybody does that. You want backlinks they can't copy. For example, uh -huh. if you have an alma mater, uh, like a university, like I went to Baylor University, they have a magazine, um, they have a, a alumni directory. Uh, get backlinks from your uh, alma mater. Get rid of their alumni magazine. Uh, which they'll have a you know online version and get backlinks from that. Uh, edu is a great back you know great great way to get backlinks. Recently we were we had a we've been giving away free cleans for first responders for a couple months now, and we got a story on the local news uh, channel four news, and that was an amazing backlink to our website too. Um, and also it's great to have the video you know put on your YouTube page or, uh, or whatnot. Um, these are backlinks people can't copy, and this is what will give your business the edge. Wow. Okay. So, so use your local presence to get those backlinks that are specific to your own company. Yeah, you to know, my own company. Use your local network. Um, you know, I remember Gary Gorenson, um, great guy. Um, we lost <laughs> we lost a great coach when he passed away. Um, Yes, indeed. I can't say enough good things about him. Um, I purchased his program in 2005, and we kept in touch. And I wrote him a great testimonial for his product because his product was great. And Gary had posted that on his website with a backlink to my website. And links like that, using your network, uh, writing testimonials or getting the news, uh, those are links that bring in quality juice to your website and your competition can't copy. So you shoot up to the okay. top in those time. All right, that is good. I like that. Uh, good. Let's see, I thought there was another question up here. Let's see, where is it? Oh, I know what it was. Robin was just saying that because your supplies have labels on them, it, it probably hasn't been as much of a deal to be worrying about the SDS. Um, oh, see. I thought okay. there was one more. Go ahead. I'll still look into it. Okay. Well, um, what, Tom? We're um, getting close to the uh, end of our time together here today. I wanted to take just a minute again to remind everybody tomorrow, Shara is going to be here. Did I say that right? Yeah, and it's going to be an unprecedented event because my daughter has never been on um, a Smart Business Move <laughs> Facebook Live, and especially not during COVID, but she's also working out of her home right now, and so that's how we are linking up that. Thank you, Liz. Got you, Tom. Thank you. You're welcome. You got my back. I got your back. 
That's and Friday, right. And Friday, we've got uh, on the spot. We made an announcement yesterday. We'll you'll be hearing more about this in days ahead, but mark your calendar for next Wednesday, a uh, week from today. We're going to be doing uh, CBT uh, deal day. We're going to have 10 vendors with a four minute pitch uh, and, a, and a, a, a deal that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else. It's only going to be good for, you know, maybe one to two days. It'll certainly be gone by the end of the week. And um, that's about all we need to talk about today. If you haven't subscribed to uh, Cleaning Business Today, you guys know where that is, right? Email, first name, last name. You'll get our new newsletter. You'll get updates on our uh, deal days. And here's our super secret backlink that when you come back tomorrow, there's going to be a couple of other links here going to Greg's blog. <laughs> Giving him SEO, a little, little SEO juice, and giving you access to some valuable material that will help you grow your business. Yeah. And we're going to be able to see exactly how it happens. How how he, I mean, I know I'm going to be, as soon as I see those, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to look at how he sets up his blog. How he has everything going there so that his natural response to anybody asking for anything is sure i'll post it to my blog and i'll send you a link that was his natural response he didn't have to think about that he was trying to figure out hmm how can i get that over to them he knew how many times has he said that you guys that that answer just popped off mm -hmm. of his thumb right that's what he yeah. always said i'm gonna raise my hand here um okay i gotta do a shameless plug uh so i'm okay. gonna start another seo company pretty soon uh we're only picking just a few clients. We have a uh, few spots left. So if uh, anybody needs SEO services uh, and these are results that will last and they won't go away, if you fire me, um, just let me know. Uh, shoot me an email at gregandallismace.com and uh, we'll talk. Uh, and I, I, have, I have a question for you real quick though. I'm first, Tom. Ladies first. <laughs> Because I want my question. All right. So Greg earlier said, "Hey, just do the basics. You don't need to hire a, a company for I can't remember. Yeah, for such a uh, whatever it is amount of money. So best is that what you're saying is don't just be hiring a company like that that's going to go and they're just going to do whatever random stuff there is. But Hiring you is we're going to get you, Greg, working on our SEO, doing your black hat activities for for our SEO. Is that what I'm? Well, you don't want black hats. Um, you know, oh, white hat. No, yeah, what white, hat. white hat. Yeah, you want white hat. Yeah, so white hat, the good yeah, guys. Not even off white or gray. No, you want white hat. Yeah. Okay. You know the um, I don't do anything superficial or manipulating. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, gurus, professionals might, you know, have give you backlinks from their, you know, their own uh, websites that they built just for that purpose. Um, you know, the, the work that I would do would actually still, uh, what's it, um, would be very effective. That is, if you, you know, decide not to use my services anymore, you will still be ranking very, very high. Um, yeah, so basically, I will do it the right way. And um, if you're in a big market like Dallas, um, yeah, I, I could push you up to the top. I will only be taking one client per city because I don't want to have two clients. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I, yes. do I have to send you an email or can you just put me at the top of your list? <laughs> uh, you're, you're at the top of my list. I'll, so, I'll send you the email if you want, but. Let me let me let me just add a couple of points. It's kind of funny if you're looking for an SEO company and you Google SEO company, would you want to hire the one that shows up on the fifth page? Probably not. But Greg's showing you here that he knows what he's doing because it is hard, really hard to rank in a big city, and he's doing it twice. Um, and the other observation is. And this is just 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 honest. When you most people who start SEO companies, when they start out with their first couple of customers, 
they really do a good job for them because they're not overwhelmed with, with a large volume and they're building a business. So they want to make sure at the very least, those first two customers are happy because that's how it's going to grow. So not to say that there aren't large SEO companies out there that aren't good. I'm, I know that they are, but Greg knows what he's doing. And if you're one of his first customers, he's going to make sure you get results. Oh. I'll make sure everybody gets results. Uh, it won't start with the first, but of course, you're right. There's a huge incentive uh, for the, my first three or four customers to make sure that they're killing it, dominating Google. Because, um, yeah, I've proven it with my own websites, my own companies, but uh, you've got to prove it with a, you know somebody else, too. And who knows? Um, we still have a few spl slots left for next Wednesday's deal day. Maybe we can... <laughs> Maybe we can uh, encourage Greg to come back for uh, for deal day next Wednesday. I'd love that. I'm pitch a deal. But, Greg, I wasn't kidding. You saw that my face was serious, right? I'll be top of that list. <laughs> you got okay. it. Um, I'm not joking. It. Stop laughing. It makes me nervous. I, every time he laughs, I'm like, oh, no, he thinks I'm joking. I'm not joking. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk later on. I need SEO. This isn't joking. So it is uh, top of the hour here. And hey, Heather, oh, wait a minute. Look, I missed uh, Heather's here. And Don wants to know how do we contact Greg? Greg at DallasMaids.com. Right, Greg? That's it. That's how you get hold of him, Don, or anybody else. I want to be your client. Can you send me your email? No, Paula, he can't. But I'll tell you what it is. Maybe Tom will post it over here for us. It is Greg, G-R-E-G, -E at Dallas, Maine. There it is. There you go. Take that little link there. Yeah. yeah. And so, no, I, I, um, I have one last question real quick. I know Tom has something he's dying to say, too. And I'm sorry, Tom, I keep cutting you off, but I'm so excited here. Um, when we're talking about SEO, whenever we talk up to SEO companies, they always say, well, you can't really expect any results for a minimum of three months and it could be six months, and you're just going to have to trust me. Is, is that how it is? Do you agree with that? Absolutely. So let me let me draw a chart that, you know, uh, will illustrate this. So a lot of people will think, oh, there we are, it's just a steady increase like this, um, which it's not. Yeah. Um, it's more like, this where you don't see any many results at first but then uh it goes parabolic and that usually takes about yeah around six months give or take a month or two oh you guys still around you couldn't hear me could you no i you guys oh, okay I was just hiding myself so everybody could see your 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 picture. It's it's uh, it kind of it kind of shoots up like the uh, COVID nineteen cases in some cities, like probably Dallas, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah, you, yeah, you got to wait for the results, but uh, um, yeah, they they should appear within six months. If they haven't, I, you know. I just want everybody to know that it's not a fast thing. It's not something that today you're here and then you know next month you're here it doesn't work like that all right okay guys uh tomorrow you're going to hear from a sales professional and we talk about professionalism a lot here that's what we're about and uh a lot of people sell in some form or fashion but it's a rare opportunity to actually be here somebody that, that that's at the top of their game and we're going to hear uh, from Shara, and she's going to uh, be sharing with us how she gets $40 million a year in sales. That's right, $40 million. And she is Liz's daughter, so you know she's going to be awesome. You think, you think, I, you know, I love you, Liz, but if you think Liz is awesome, <laughs> wait, you meet her daughter. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter's awesome. I, I'm not so awesome. But uh, yeah, she talks really fast, y'all. So you, you need to be ready for that because sometimes I'm like, wow love it. you need to slow down i can't even understand what you're saying she's like how am i going to get these sales in mama if i'm talking real slow i i gotta work all right 
Okay, but we're three minutes so, over. Sorry, guys. We will see you here oh, tomorrow. I'm so sorry, everybody. Five o'clock, okay? Thanks again, Greg. Hey, thanks, thanks you, Greg. Yeah. You rock. Thank you so much, Greg. Yeah, you totally rock.